this is a problem. Okay, I'm trying to find the fish in front of me. Look how pretty it is to the right of me. I need to get out the camera and start taking pictures of that. This is why I had to put the fly rod down. That cloud out there is catching the sun just right. And it's just kind of peeking beyond the close trees and there's trees in the distance. The close trees don't have the light on them. The trees in the distance do have the sunlight on them. There's some funny shadows with the setting sun on the trees that are sort of out there a little ways. But the coolest thing is that cloud catching the light. You've got the blue sky above it. And then that is a cloud that looks like it's raining. The rain on its way down to the earth is catching that light in just such a beautiful way. I don't know, I just think that's a pretty picture. This is the picture. This is the picture I took. I like taking pictures. Okay, now that we're out of the way of those shadowy trees in the foreground, I'm gonna take a few more shots just here in the clear, wide open lake, because sometimes that's pretty too. This is one of the strategies of taking a picture from a kayak. So if I paddle, I want to stay ahead of the riffles. If I slow down and stop, the riffles from the water that my kayak has made will go in front of me and the water won't be as smooth anymore. So I have to have the camera ready, I have to pick it up, and then just as we turn, so the fly rod and everything's out of the way, oh, I gotta get those ducks. Dang it. Uh, maybe missing. So as we're turning right now, you can hear the shutter. I'm taking pictures. And see, right about now, the water has caught up to where it would have been in the frame, and I would have had a little more disturbance in that water not had as clear and as glassy of a picture so it's a little bit trickier than it looks it takes some practice it takes some getting used to, to work with the water and get the water to do what you want and get it to reflect the way you want but it's a lot of fun two moose there's a moose right there in front of us in this island these are actually two different little islands and there is a moose right over there eating. And I'm taking pictures of both of them. That one looks like it's a little suspicious. It's kind of cool. That is not the prettiest moose, but it's a moose. Oh, sweet. She's getting in the water. If she swims, if she swims, we can get right up next to her. So on land, I would be very, very cautious around this moose. In the water, so I'm not very afraid of them in the water. Let's see if I can get her to, to look at me for a picture. Hey moose! <laughs> she doesn't even care about me. I've been taking pictures of this moose for a minute and uh, fully expecting her to retreat into the woods. And I think she has decided that I'm pretty cool. Because check that out, we are pretty close. So I'm gonna push my luck just a little bit. I wanna make her angry. But I'm just gonna see if we can get just a little bit closer because normally with the GoPro, you guys are just taking my word for, oh. She knew my plan. All right, well guess what? There's one more moose. <laughs> She's looking at us. Nice picture of her moose butt. Yeah, you heard me. I said you had a moose butt. Look at that camouflage clip. And all of a sudden she's gone. <laughs> I'm actually way too close to shore. If she decided she was mad at me, this would be uh, not pleasant. Not that she would come dive bombing me. Could you imagine some ninja moose just like jumping out of the woods and 
you know, a kayak. I don't think moose do that. They're probably safe. But still, when they have proper footing, that's when they're dangerous and that's when I don't like them. When they're in very, very deep water, they're not very scary. So I had to just pause, came around the corner here, and all of a sudden those clouds in the distance are catching a little bit of pink. And I think that's pretty cool. Anytime I see clouds catching, I mean, you know, if you look ahead this way, you've got like the yellow from the sunlight, the kind of orange glow. Just kind of, I don't know. I just like the variety. They all make good pictures. I just like when I can go in one night and have some clouds be pink and some be purple and some blue and some orange. So right now here, I can take pictures going that way and get the orange. And this way and get that nice kind of purple and pink. That's cool. I'm going to take a few more pictures. I think some of these are going to turn out really nice. We got the beaver back here with us again. This beaver's coming right at me though. That is a big beaver. I bet we see it slap its tail again. Look at the size of that head. Look, there's the beaver again. Check him out right there. This is gonna feel like a rerun because <laughs> this is like my third episode, third time taking the GoPro out on the lake, and suddenly like all the same things are happening. I, I saw some really cool moose. I've got this beaver, and I swear it's the same beaver. He's right there. He's right in front of me. I'm gonna turn you around and see him. He's just he's doing the same thing. Watch. We'll go we'll go closer to him, and he'll slap his tail. But it's a much prettier night, so I do want to show you this. Look at that background. Look how pretty that is behind him. Here goes. Cool. This is a really cool spot. Right behind me uh, is where I was just taking some pictures. Right over there, I took one or two really cool pictures. I love how the there's the kind of evening sky, and then this pink layer of cloud, and then a dark purple, and then the, the green trees. The trees are just, they almost seem like they're glowing, like light is coming out of those trees. This is how, you know, I've been out for maybe three hours and it looks like I've witnessed four or five different sunsets in different places. One thing that's cool about the clouds here that you've probably seen in some of these pictures, I love that there will be multicolored clouds and that has to do with the height of the cloud. So I'm going to show you right behind me here. I just took a few pictures of this. But that, that one little dark one, that's got to be a little bit lower, so it's not, it's not catching as much sunlight. Where everything that's orange is a little bit higher, so it's still catching the light as it goes down. And the neat thing about this area where I live, I'm, I'm not really close to the ocean, but I'm very, very low in elevation. I'm, I'm actually pretty close to sea level. There is a lot more room in the atmosphere for the clouds to be at various heights. I've said to people, the skies in Alaska are just the most beautiful skies anywhere. And that seems like a dumb thing to say. That seems like you could say, like, oh, the water tastes better in such and such place, which is also a thing people say, and, and that seems like a thing that people make up. But the skies really, because we're so close to sea level, but we're not near the ocean, there's some pretty cool skies here. So I'm just going to turn this around, and we're going to do a little zip, 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 zip thing. It's 12.14 a.m. I love that I can call it a perfectly calm evening and it's after midnight. But this is just really cool. One thing I discovered after showing up in Alaska, a lot of times you get to a Friday night and when you're grown up and married and you're not like a party animal like me, uh, Friday night's like sweet Xbox time or like time to read a book or watch a movie and then eat some popcorn and then go to bed. And, and that's fine. But I love that in Alaska somebody like me can, be, can say, hey, Friday night, I'm going to go fishing, and I'm going to go fishing as long as I want, and I, I might be out till 4 in the morning. That whole time, now I feel done because that whole time I was talking, 
I had no idea. It was really pretty behind me. I was looking at the not pretty side, and uh, and that's fine. So I'm gonna turn around and take a few pictures of that right behind me. You should have told me. Man, look at that. I'm gonna get a little further away from those trees so that we can see more of the cloud. So we can have a beautiful pink cloud in this next picture. I'm gonna take. That's a neat thing about being a kayak photographer. I can't necessarily control where the where the trees are. I mean, tree, I can't move the trees. The trees are stuck in the ground. And I can't control where the clouds are. They just do whatever they want. But I can move where I am. And when you're on a beautiful glassy lake like this, I can pick the spot I want. And so right now, I see that cloud out there. And I want to get more of that exposed. So I'm going away from the trees so more of that is visible. So that way you get that nice, oh man, that's behind me. That way you get that nice, beautiful, pink in the water and in the sky. And there's not a lot of wind right now, so it can be calm enough and still enough that we can do this. I can, I just need to wait and let my kayak riffles die down, and then I'm gonna get the exact picture I want. Maybe not the exact picture I want. I don't know if this actually is, well, it's, it's not bad. So this is one I will show. <laughs> The funny thing is I can, when I'm editing the YouTube channel, I can just show you the actual picture. But like you were a real person, I wanted to just say, look, I mean, you are a real person that is watching this, but you know, it's not like the GoPro has a person. The moon is so thin, I don't think it'll show up on the GoPro. I'll zoom way in with the camera so I can show you the moon. I want this summer at some point to take a picture of a bald eagle perched on a tree with the moon, a full moon, right behind it. And I think I can do that. I've seen bald eagles on this lake. I just need to, you know, be out on a night with a full moon and find one perched in a tree. And then I can move myself around, I can move the kayak around to get to the point where the full moon is right behind the bald eagle. To make it work, you actually have to have a pretty powerful lens, a pretty good zooming lens. And then you can do cool pictures like that where an eagle takes up the whole moon. Otherwise, if you just try that with your phone, if you're just going to take a picture of an eagle in front of a moon with your phone, it's not going to work because the moon will be a tiny dot and the eagle, you'll have to tell people that's an eagle. But yeah, this, this is going to work. I mean, there's no eagle right now, but I'm just taking test shots of how the, the tree with the moon, this will work. I've been using the Nikon D3400 shown here. What I love about the Nikon D3400, it's easy and there is a guide function. So you can switch to the guide mode and when you're using the guide mode, you can look at something and say, okay, this is what I want to do. And it does the thinking for you and also trains you. So if you say, I'm taking a picture of a waterfall, but I want the water to appear all, all blurry like people do with waterfall pictures sometimes. We'll say, oh, do this. And see, I'm not even an educated enough photographer to tell you off the top of my head what it is, but this knows. And so this will help you become a better photographer. So me making the transition, last year I was all iPhone. I only used my iPhone. And then I tried to print a few of the pictures thinking I could maybe do something with them. And the print quality just wasn't there. So I thought, okay, I need something a little more powerful. And so I got the, this is like a, starter SLR. It's kind of a small one. It was only, I think it was just over $500. I think with the two lens bundle, it might've been six, but uh, it wasn't too bad. And like I say, it's a good starter camera. You can learn how to use an SLR pretty easily with this one. My plan is in a few years, I would love to get something a lot more powerful. You know, one of those, I think the, the higher those numbers go, the more expensive it gets. I'm okay working with this for now. It's cheap. If I drop it in the lake, well, I don't want to drop it in the lake because it's 500 bucks, but uh, that's better than dropping a $5,000 camera in the lake. So I will work on not dropping the camera in the lake like this. This is a good way to not drop it in the lake is to wear this. So being here with my real eyeballs and seeing that, those clouds are just beautiful glowing. And then even with a good camera, even with an SLR, when you look at it on the computer, you're like, man, when I was there with my real light, like with my real eyeballs, it looked like it was much, much brighter. And so that's why I feel like when I'm sitting here and I'm seeing with my eyeballs those clouds just be this beautiful pink color, and then I look at this screen and I say, this is not as good as that, I feel like it's okay to use Lightroom or to even use Photoshop to try to get this to look more like that. 
maybe even beyond if you want to enhance it a little bit and get it to look even better and even cooler but i feel like there's nothing wrong with trying to get this to look more like that looks to me I'm not going to share that with anyone. Why would I even say that? <laughs> <laughs>